gonna get to the bottom. We're of getting it. to the bottom of this. What's up, you guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. I'm Steven. And today's video, Bethel Church on their YouTube channel is addressing the grave soaking. We know that this is a topic that many people, maybe they think they have ideas about, maybe they've researched, they've come up with their positions, and I think it's worth talking about. Let's do Dig it. it. Steven, you guys might have seen him on my Instagram. He's a good friend of mine, and he loves to do deep dives into topics, so I thought it would be fun to bring him along on this video. Yes. Sweet. He's like an investigator of all things. Yes. And guys, as you can probably tell, we moved. Ah! And we got a little bit of a new backdrop. We're still in the process of working out the kinks in our backdrop. I haven't totally finished it or come up with what it's going to really look like, but... But I'm liking it. Before we get into this video, you guys know what to do. Some of you all may have been watching our videos for literally four years and you never hit that subscribe button. That's a travesty. <laughs> Why? <laughs> hit the subscribe button. We make videos on culture and social issues from a Christian perspective to help you have hope. And be free. free. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, let's start off with this. Bethel Church, or just the church at large, and Stephen said this a bit ago off camera, we want to be careful, so to speak, when it comes to speaking on the Christian church. You know, we, we want unity in the church. That is what we desire deeply. That's what Jesus desired in his prayer, and I think it was John 16, maybe. I pray for unity yeah. among believers, so we desire that. We are not here to be like, Oh, look, Bethel did this, they said this, let's talk about it on our channel. But there is a place to bring up stuff and talk about it. Perhaps there needs to be warnings. Maybe we'll come to the conclusion, oh, this actually, they're doing it just fine. Like, I'm not totally sure, and I'm not even totally sure we're all going to see it completely the same way. That's part of the beauty of having a channel and being able to discuss. And our goal isn't to throw any mic drop or throw anybody under the bus. And, you know, I think they talk about in the video, too, that... The internet's crazy. Yeah, you can so easily misconstrue a picture or a one sentence totally taken out of context. And literally, I mean, that's how rumors spread and that's how total misunderstandings happen. Yeah. And I think that's happened a lot with Bethel, in my opinion. But I think some of it is valid. And I think that this is a good conversation to have. I know you guys have reached out to us a lot about just our thoughts on Bethel. And we've talked a little bit about it here and there in other videos. Yeah. Well, and we, when we have brought it up, talked about kind of Bethel, Todd White, the American Gospel documentary, there's been like a lot of interest and a lot of people weighing in. So we... <laughs> Um, about four or five days ago, I want to say, a video popped up on my timeline. The title of this video was, Does Bethel Church Teach Grave Soaking? Rediscover Bethel. Say what? So it came out about a week ago. It's on Bethel's actual YouTube channel. It's about a 26 minute clip. We'll link it all below if you want to go watch that. I want to play a few clips out of this discussion between Pastor Bill Johnson of Bethel and I think it's the Dean of Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. I noticed they've been making several of these videos calling them Rediscover Bethel and they're addressing maybe popular misconceptions misconceptions concerns accusations that's cool so the grave soaking one i i have heard people really come after bethel for this saying did you know that bethel lays on graves to soak up the spirit of the dead saint or the dead huh. person underneath. I, I mean, that is, it's a pretty common accusation, I think. That is maybe the most common accusation that I hear about when people say that they don't like Bethel or they feel bad about Bethel or not good about it. Like they say, well, they believe in grave soaking. I'm seeing, oh, they're addressing this. Literally the pastor's addressing this. Let's see what he has to say on it. Yeah. If these accusations are true, that many people are throwing at Bethel, if they're true, that's very concerning. That sounds pretty occult-like. And for those of you who may not be as familiar with Bethel, huge church, very influential, I would say, music, huge. The church as a whole and the ministry and what they're doing out of Redding, California. The interesting thing is you have people that on one end just love them, but then you have other Christians who are very concerned to the point of literally saying that's it's false teaching. 
mm-hmm. coming out of Bethel. So that's yeah. that's kind of what what we want to discuss here in yeah. a sense. They've, they've been accused of a lot of different things, but this is the one that you know we're focusing on right now, and we just want to get to the bottom of it. We want to get to the bottom of it. We want to <laughs> get to the bottom. Of we're getting it. to the bottom. bottom of this. <laughs> the bottom of this grave. <laughs> oh, wow. Dude, that's now. All right, play the first clip. But when it comes to ministry, when it comes especially to areas that are in the Bible that we don't know anyone who's who's really living in fully, mm-hmm. we experiment. Mm-hmm. And that makes a lot of people nervous, but that yeah. is that is the nature of it. And sometimes we succeed, and when we do, it's usually big. And when we fail, it's usually big. <laughs> yeah. About three minutes in, as they're getting going, talking about this grave-soaking accusation, Bill says we experiment. What do you guys think about that? I think experimenting is good. You know, that's that's a good thing. He also says it's an unspoken like thing in their leadership. I think it should be spoken. Mm-hmm. Like there's always failing and messing up, especially with the church. And I know they talk about when they had a smaller footprint, yep. things were easier for them. And it just didn't just go out there on the internet. I think that it's cool to be open to allowing the spirit to move and to experimenting in a way. But even when it when it comes to experimenting, like you've got the Bible and that is like your guidebook mm-hmm. when it comes to experimenting. And so if you start doing things that like just are not in the Bible at all and almost are a little bit or very much so like new agey you should yeah. probably not ever even experiment with those things agreed and so yeah i think that it's a very thin line and, he, and they also <laughs> use the word um spooky which i thought was interesting because yeah. like the only time i've ever heard the word spooky is with quantum mechanics which i know is like this crazy thing but like <laughs> This is church. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's, you know, (laughs) this is church, though. Like, there shouldn't be anything spooky about it. Right. The church is, like, whether anybody disagrees with it or not, like, the church should be a place that people receive the gospel. And there shouldn't be anything spooky about that. There should be, you know, like, just fellowship and baptism and light and the word freedom. yeah it shouldn't be dark and spooky right well <laughs> that's an interesting thing on that note i, I want to make it clear spoiler alert a little bit but they do emphasize the idea of grave soaking that many are accusing us of they are taking it out of context they so, said they said their critics coined the term that's not a term that they you know would have ever thought to have they've coined. never taught grave soaking they've never used that word until yeah their critics came up with it and it we'll get like, in that was grave soaking right we'll get in here in just a moment to what they actually do that that make people kind of wonder but overall they're saying people have taken it out of context we do not lie on graves hoping to hear from the dead person or the dead bones underneath hoping to soak up stuff yeah, through the concrete through, through the, the concrete that's, they, they that's make they that said. clear they make yeah. that clear but then there are a few things that we'll talk about here in a minute to the next clip and now every once in a while somebody Good discovers point. an old video or an old something rather like hey do you guys like no yeah. no yeah. we don't so hopefully yeah, this, exactly. this time of uh, talking will help put that to rest a little bit it it may it may in part come out of the fact that i have really felt strong from the lord that we are to honor those who have gone before us. Mm-hmm. And it's a huge part of our culture. You know, the, we're, we're uh, going to be building this revival uh, uh, museum, library, library mm-hmm. a house of generals, where we give honor to people who have gone before us. And some of them ended poorly. I've gone to graves. I've prayed. But I don't. we don't talk to the dead. We don't yeah. try to get something from the dead. I mean, that's... Yeah. But I will. I'll, I'll kneel. I'll humble myself before the Lord. I pray uh, Charles Finney... God, we we need that kind of an awakening in our nation again. I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with honoring the people that went before us. We honor these people because they've done really amazing things for us, for our beliefs, for our country, whatever. We've done that for the last 2,000 years with the church fathers and with yeah. people who have been instrumental in the faith. Yeah. Bill's about to take it a step further to talking about anointings that uh, someone may not have passed on to the next generations and we can tap into that. I think that's where it gets a little more controversial, but as far as just honoring church figures who have been influential, whether it's all the way back to Moses and Joseph, David, Paul, or new, you know, in the more recent times with the great revivals and stuff, it's clear that Bill Johnson has very much, I guess he's very invested 
in the way that God has worked more in recent times, the moves of God and the people he's used. And that's pretty common you see in people that are really after revival. Oh yeah. They read lots of these works, Finney and Wigglesworth and you know, just all these names. <laughs> and I agree with them, like, you know, that kind of stuff would be great to happen in this generation. The revival and the gifts that those people had, that's a that's a good thing to want. I think it is kind of a personal thing of like admiring someone, really looking up to them, really admiring what they've done in the faith and for the faith, wanting to learn from them. So you're reading their, all their books that they put out. You're watching the videos that they've, the, the sermons that they've preached. I personally have never been like that. Like, You've never had that <laughs> real drive to be inspired. I'm kind inspired. of like my own little butterfly. What's interesting to me, yes, like I, I do want to honor. Yeah, I want to give honor where honor is due. But a lot of these men are held in such high esteem, but some of them have some pretty problematic doctrines. Mm -hmm. And so if you start hoisting these men up so high, that can become problematic. And that's where I tend to really put my eggs in. I'm going to go to the Bible. I'm going to go to the Bible. Still can appreciate this. I'm kind of like Morgan. I don't read. I, I, I read very little of, <laughs> of these, these none, men. None. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> You read commentaries, so I guess that counts. Okay. You see certain Christians that get almost obsessed yeah. with these spiritual figures that are, you know, have come after the Bible, have come in the last hundred years, in the last 80 years, and it's like, maybe chill out a little bit. I mean, there's there's people I follow, you know, some older folks within the last decade um, or two, like Derek Prince, you know, like learning things about demonology, but... Mm -hmm. Like, there's things that he says I don't agree with. You know, I respect my elders, but Jesus is ultimately the vine, and gifts come from God, period. Like, we just have to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's keep going. Well, and to be super clear, sometimes a quote of yours is attributed to this idea that we're actually going to graves looking for anointings to be, you know, to, to get and to pass on. Um, there are anointings, mantles, revelations, and mysteries that have lain unclaimed literally where they were left because the generation that walked in them never passed them on. I believe it's possible for us to recover <laughs> realms of anointing, uh, realms of insight, realms of God that have been uh, untended for decades simply by choosing to reclaim them and perpetuate them for future generations. Now we're into the more controversial stuff in my opinion. So I have uh, a few questions. One, he says that these have been left there and that we need to reclaim them. I would ask, says who? And why should I believe him? Mm -hmm. What can he point to that says that we need to do that? Mm -hmm. And what can he point to that says that they've been left there? Mm -hmm. I, you know, those are... Those yeah, questions where, I have. where does that come from? That's just a thought that you've had. Did God reveal that to you? Where is it in the Bible to back up the fact that God revealed this to you? And that was something that, that he wrote in a book. Remember the name of the book? Uh, Physics of Heaven. Physics of Heaven. I think he co-authored that. He was one of the authors. Yeah, so when I hear that, I, I agree with both Stephen and Morgan. I'm like, okay, so anointings that someone had, maybe a man had, and then he didn't pass it on to the next generation. So the anointing is just kind of sitting in, in suspension with him. And now we as Christians, we get to go claim that. That's where it sounds new age. That's, I guess I'm hoping that maybe Bill, and I, I don't go to Bethel, I've never been. I'm hoping that he, he doesn't push this idea too hard. Mm -hmm. If he thinks to himself, or maybe he's prayed and he feels like he's got something here, then explore that on your own with God. But to start, and this is my concern with a lot of churches, really, is they take something that they feel like, oh, I, I got something here. They start preaching it. They start kind of putting it into their doctrine, their the their church thesis, so to speak. And it's just not biblical. I'm not saying it's totally like, oh my goodness, that is the worst thing I've ever heard. I'm not. And as a shepherd, you know, you have a role to be clear and concise in your communication with the audience. I, I can't blame them for running taking that and running with it. It's something that you really need to test the spirits of that with the Lord on your own and with like your close mentors and accountability partners rather than writing it in a book for your entire church to read, preaching about it maybe, and putting it out there for the whole world. And I think, and, and I think some people have <laughs> attached that to this grave soaking idea and said, well, they've posted some pictures on graves. His wife has a picture laying on a grave. Or they've said some stuff about graves, and then Bill Johnson says this, that there's anointings that are sitting, kind of waiting, paused, so to speak, with one person or generation, and now we can go claim that for our generation. And so that together with the grave stuff sounds pretty weird. 
Yeah. yeah. And we do see biblical evidence in, in scripture that anointings have been passed on, Elijah and Elisha, that clearly happened. Okay. Let's talk about that for a second. So we saw, yes, Elisha, was it, did Elijah say like, what, what do you want me to do for you? And if I'm remembering correctly, and Elisha said, give me a double portion, a double portion of your anointing. Your that's, anointing. That's a bold prayer. Elijah says, if you see me ascend up into heaven, you'll get that double portion. I can't remember the scripture. Exactly. I can't remember exactly, <laughs> but it's something like that. So yeah. I'm sure Bill Johnson is using that to kind of form this idea of an anointing maybe stopped with somebody and we can go reclaim that. So does that mean there's enough biblical precedence for Bill Johnson to kind of preach on this in his book? They haven't used any scripture to, to back that up. And that's ultimately what we need to be looking for because that's one of the number one ways that God speaks is through his word that's already been written. Oh, 100%. He hasn't done that. He just kind of put it in the book and I haven't read the book, but yeah. Do you feel like that? I, I'm genuinely like thinking to myself, okay, so there is an example, anointing getting passed on. We don't see an example, to my knowledge, in scripture of a person died and we go sit on their grave, pray on their grave and receive the anointing. Or even the person dies and so we just say, God, they had an anointing. It stopped with them. Give us this anointing. Like, I don't see that. Yeah, I feel like he's maybe stretching. Mm -hmm. he, he reads that and he's like, okay, this validates my thoughts that I've been having about like when a person dies and they don't pass on their anointing, like we can go pick it up. <laughs> so stretching, I like that. I will stretching. stretching I, I think that Bill and the guy that he's with and maybe the church motto, they're okay with potentially stretching, or I guess you could call it, I, I don't want to, you know, speak, put words in their mouth, but taking risks. And then they say in this video, I feel like a couple times or in a couple different ways, we are okay with experimenting. I would rather have a church that takes risks and misses it sometimes than never takes risk and just is a, a dead church, so to speak. Yeah, and we, all, we also know that, first of all, the Old Testament is not irrelevant. And it, actually, it, it further exemplifies the gospel. I love the Old Testament. Secondly, me too. Secondly, we have the Holy Spirit. That's our anointing. Like, we might have different anointings in different areas and different gifts that we've been given, but the Holy Spirit is ultimately the, the source of that. And, you know, there is different anointings that happen in the Old Testament for that specific reasons reasons within prophecy and so now you got me wondering in the old testament we saw the anointing of elijah to elisha in the new testament jesus after he ascended we got the holy spirit pentecost yeah so i like what you just said we have the holy yeah. spirit yeah. of anointing do we need an anointing of a man or kind of the mantle that he carried i, I just feel like like morgan said it feels like a stretch to me if you want to take a risk bethel and bill johnson and start kind of going after that to me it seems like a stretch let me know your all's thoughts on that particular part in the comments where are you at with it and just real quick i want to say bill again towards the end of, of the video he does make it clear we may take a risk and i may look at it down the road and be like eh that kind of fell flat. So he's admitting part of their package is we're going to take risks and we're going to miss it sometimes. And isn't that all of us? I mean, mm -hmm. we're all taking risks. Yeah. We're all announcing on Instagram the next new thing that we're going to try out. Mm -hmm, and yeah. then like it flops a week later. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one <laughs> though. Embarrassing. Because I, I like there's a place for taking risks with the Lord. Yes. But it's just like at what point does it become concerning? And the whole point of following Jesus is the risk. He tells us in I think it's Luke 16 count the costs like an architect sits down and counts the cost of building the project hmm. he says this is a risk i just experimentation maybe in like worship or something and like hey maybe let's try this key or something but like <laughs> experiment we know that word generally means something that's just like not been done before i think we just need to be careful with experimenting because like steven said experimenting is used in like we're doing something that nobody's ever done before. Okay, that's fine, but is that what the Lord's calling you to? Or is it just that's what you want to do? Hey, and real quick, the gospel never changes. The message is always the same. I mean, yeah. it's been going around for 2,000 years, and 2,000 years before that is a foreshadow. Mm -hmm. So we just, we need to stick to biblical principles. Yes. That's good. If we're being real, there's a lot of churches in America that seem very dry to the point of almost being dead. So I, I want to give some credit to churches that are like, we want the Lord. We want to be a thriving, living church. And because there's so many dry churches, we are going to look different. You know, there's a place for that yeah. too. There's a place for that. Absolutely. It's admirable. And yes, go after revival. Go after God. Go after his heart. Go after knowing him better and deeper. 
go after being on fire, but like, let's not get so carried away that we literally start losing sight of the gospel and that it never changes. <laughs> mm. All right, next clip. And we have a responsibility. It's a responsibility of honor, mm -hmm. but it's also a responsibility to preserve the testimony because that's the spoken and or written record of what God has done yeah. which prophesies his intent into this generation. And if we don't steward the testimony well, the record of his nature, mm -hmm. the displays of his covenant with people, if we don't steward that well, we're not really prepared for what he wants to do again. Yeah. And so it, they're all intertwined. It's our responsibility to serve this generation well. Well, he, he used that word honor again, and that <laughs> seems to be a big thing. But I would just ask Bill, like, you know, says who? We have preserved and written records. It's called and, the canonization of scripture, baby. And we finally closed in, in the, you know, the 15th century, 16th century. And we're living in a time where we have access to that. That is preserved. It just, it sounded like he was elevating these latter things that have come after the canonization of scripture. And he was saying, if we don't honor this, if we don't save it, then we're doing a disservice. And I'm kind of like, if you want to do that, fine, but let's not put that at too hot. Cause I mean, he was, he was really holding yeah. this ladder stuff in a high place, in high esteem. And I'm like, He's, let's make sure we, we really know, here's what we hold in high esteem, Old and New Testament, that they've canonized. The other stuff is great. Let's keep going. So this picture of your wife, Benny, being uh, laying down on the grave. Yeah, and that is actually like, so when we say we don't practice this, you're like, ah, we have photographic evidence of Benny <laughs> laying on the grave. What, what, what is she doing? What's her story in that? What's what's up to? What's you know, our that? whole deal is we, we want to respond to God in a way that he wants us to respond. If I kneel, if I dance, I've shouted, I've danced before the Lord, I'll lay prostrate before the Lord. And it's that's all it is, is it's... We want to be, so he doesn't really uh, answer the question about his wife laying on the grave. Impressions that will do whatever he says to do. So this picture of your wife Benny being uh, laying down on a grave, and yeah, that is actually yeah, yeah. like. So when we say we don't practice this, you're like, ah, oh, we have photographic evidence of <laughs> Benny laying on the grave. What, what what is she doing? What's her story in that? What's what's up to? What's you know, our that? whole deal is we we want to respond to God in a way that He wants us to respond. Mm -hmm. If I kneel, if I dance, I've shouted, I've danced before the Lord. I'll lay prostrate before the Lord, and it's that's all it is. Is it's we want to be uh, responsive enough to His impressions that we'll do whatever He says to do. It's we because He didn't really answer why she was laying on someone's grave. <laughs> and okay, maybe it was just like she just felt the presence of the Lord in a really intense way, and she just had to lay down right there and just pray. I hope that's what it was. But if it is this weird thing of her laying, hoping that she's soaking up this dead person's anointing, or she's going to be the one that carries this mantle that this person had, that's really questionable in my opinion. I hope that's not the case. And but it, from what they've talked... From what they've said, it doesn't it seem doesn't like sound. that's the case. But yeah. yeah, he didn't really answer the question, why was she lying on the grave? But rather he said, sometimes being obedient to the Lord and responsive is going to look weird and that's just how it is. I would agree with that. Yeah. David said, I will be even more undignified than this when his wife was calling him out for dancing oh, before the Lord with a linen cloth, <laughs> cloth on. <laughs> I get that. That would look weird, but that was right in his yeah. spirit, right before the Lord. It's going to look weird um, yeah. sometimes, to, especially to certain people that are just... Like, oh, yes. You know, the, the apostles, they, they seem drunk when they mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit fell on them. It's going to happen. We've all looked weird yeah. to a lot of people before, and that's fine. Hopefully they won't continue because they've made it clear they're not, when it comes to the grave soaking, they're not laying on the grave hoping to <laughs> whoop, soak in this person's spirit or hear from like their, their voice. or It's not, so they're making it clear it's not, weird like people are saying it might be weird but it's not weird in that way <laughs> if the wife was posting that picture kind of just having some fun and they alluded to it earlier in the video like we thought it was kind of funny that people were accusing us of this grave soaking you know it, that's fine but now that it's like kind of gotten a gray area let's not yeah. keep making these right jokes posts or so joking posts guys. Maybe post of them laying on the grave. Maybe, like, let's hold off on she's, that. She's posted a couple out there on social media, and people have run with it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, she's posted some on Facebook too of her hugging a grave of the the Finny Finny guy. I don't know who that is. <laughs> and it just says, "This is what I like to do." So she's having <laughs> fun with it. Uh, it's almost like a very subtle trolling, uh-huh. maybe. Uh-huh. And then the comments say, "Soak it up for me." And it's like, yeah, someone said that. That's fair. But Goodness. come on, let's not come take on. it too far. All right, guys, comment below. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Keep the comments respectful. Um, have you been to Bethel? What's your experience? What's your experience doing research? What are your thoughts? Give this video a thumbs up. If you appreciated having Steven's voice in this video, I thought you had some really good stuff to share, bro. Thanks, buddy. (laughs) Boom. All right, guys, we love you very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll catch you again very soon. Have hope. And be free. That's what causes like a... Chasm? A schism. That's what causes... Squishy helper out. Wrinkle in time. Wrinkle in time? (laughs) Thank you.